uh, loans and grants. You need to do it in terms of a noble cause. And one of the noble causes that the Obama administration used with the stimulus was green energy. I mean, who is opposed to the idea that we need alternatives to our dependence on Middle East oil? Or who's opposed to the idea of creating high-tech green jobs? In the 1705 loan program, which is designed to provide loans for companies like Solyndra, there was $20 billion that was committed to companies. Of that $20 billion, you can directly link more than $16 billion of it to financiers who are either members of Barack Obama's 2008 campaign finance committee or were bundlers for his campaign. Solyndra was a massive failure. It was a joke. This White House is completely comfortable with taking billions of your dollars and doling it out to favored interests, favored companies, and political contributors. We saw its failure, and we, the taxpayer, got nothing out of the deal. Somebody should have gone to jail on this. It's inherently corrupt. They don't think there's anything wrong with it. President Obama, he thinks he is the law. I couldn't agree anymore. Another clip from the film District of Corruption. The movie highlights several of the most disturbing things that President Obama has done since taking office. And joining me now to talk about the botched Solyndra investment and much more is the author of Throw Them All Out, president of the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer is with us. How are you, sir? Thanks, Good to see you. Here. Thanks, Sean. Um, you know, this is amazing. And this is what you were saying. And mm -hmm. tell me what part I have wrong, because it wasn't just Solyndra. Yeah. So in the weeks before Solyndra gets this money, yeah. these loan guarantees, which we're never going to get paid back, okay, right. we got the big bundlers to Obama. Mm -hmm. They get, as I understood, what, four or five times access in a short period of time. That's right. Just before the money's given, billions of taxpayer dollars. Right, right. That ends up going belly up. Yes. They get access to the president because they donated big money to his campaign. That's exactly right. So it sounds like a kickback to me. What am I missing? Well, I call it the Obama recycling program. And by yeah. that, I mean you're really recycling money back to your campaign contributors. And that's really the problem. People have the impression that, you know, the green energy program or these other government investment programs are run by engineers and scientists. The reality is it's political appointees that are making these decisions. And they're making decisions with our money. And, of course, they're making those decisions in terms of what's for their pe political benefit and what benefits the president. So it ends up being given to people that have contributed and helped put the president so in office. So it sounds like a lofty goal. Green energy, we're not dependent on foreign oil, right. which, by the way, the technology doesn't exist. Right. So income the bundlers, they get the money, yeah. the money's wasted, yeah. and we're left holding the bag with $16 trillion in debt. And, and yet most people don't, are not outraged over this. It's, it's Solyndra, it's Sun Power. We're drilling for oil in Brazil and we're gonna be their biggest customer. <laughs> right. we're, we're building electric cars in Finland. Yeah. yeah. That from stimulus dollars. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, there is no rhyme or reason or consistent uh, approach that has made sense in this because there really isn't one. It is really designed literally to use taxpayer dollars as a gift bag, as it were, to give to uh, supporters. And what you find oftentimes, Sean, is that in the case of Solyndra or in the case of some of these other uh, companies, literally they get government money. Sometimes it's a loan. Sometimes it's an outright cash grant. And then they would issue an IPO of stock. And the initial investors would cite the fact that they're getting federal money as a reason to, to argue why their business and company is so sound. So in other words, they get, then they make even more money on top of it. So yes. then they'll have plenty of money to give when the president runs for re-election. So you got bundlers, access, money, money back to Obama. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for example, there's a company called Amaris Biotechnology uh, out of Berkeley, California. Uh, a couple of weeks before they get $25 million cash grant from the federal government, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein and her husband buy a million dollar equity in this company. They then get the $25 million uh, federal government grant. A few months after that, they have a public IPO. The initial investors who were former Vice President Al Gore and his business partners see their investment go from $12 million to more than $80 million due to the IPO, which was possible because of taxpayer money. How much money are we talking about? Because for the person that's watching this program, how much of their money was given to 
these companies that had connections because they raised money for Obama's initial re uh, election campaign? Literally tens of billions of dollars. Tens of billions yes. of wasted dollars. And how yeah. much of it's wasted? What percentage of it? Uh, I think the overwhelming amount is has been wasted. I mean, there have already been a number of bankruptcies. There are others that are having problems that are tottering. I mean, they literally gave $1.6 billion to a company called Bright Source Energy, uh, which is already $1.8 billion in debt. It loses money every year, and yet we have poured this additional money into it, that company does not have a business model that works. And really, the problem is that because these decisions are being made for political decisions, reasons and not economic ones, they don't really care do because it's be, accomplished its purpose. Do you think it would be different if a Republican were president and this was tens and, and hundreds of billions of, of dollars that were given to cronies of Republicans? Would it be different? No. Would the reaction of the press be different? I think the reaction of the press would probably be different. But, you know, Sean, and, and, and we've talked about this before, I'm frankly skeptical of human nature. I think any politician, if you give them the opportunity to take tens of billions of dollars and give them to different people for noble causes, the temptation is going to be overwhelming for anyone to try the answer that the government really has no business in this at all. That's right. None whatsoever. So am I wrong in characterizing this as a kickback scheme? Not at all. Am I wrong in saying that it is uh, a double kickback? Not at all. I, I would say even more than a double kickback. We actually looked at the numbers, the amount of money that these bundlers raised for the president's election in 2008, the money they got in, back in taxpayer money. They got a heck of a return on their investment, Sean. For every dollar they raised for President Obama, they got more than $21,000 of taxpayer money. Pretty, that is a pretty, massive kickback. Pretty, pretty sweet deal. Yes, it is a pretty sweet yeah, deal. Yeah, pretty sad for the average family that's having a hard time paying their mortgage or putting gas in their car or sending their kids to school and buying yep. clothes and groceries or the one in six Americans in poverty. To quote a liberal, we can buy an awful lot of food for the poor people. Yes. You know? And that's a problem. Crony capitalism is, in a sense, welfare for the well-off. Because these, all these investors could have afforded to put Scary. this money in themselves. All right. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate Thanks. it. And coming up on this special edition of Hannity, we examine the botched gun operation known as Fast and Furious and how it's left blood on the hands of this administration. That's next. It's rare where you have a political scandal where you can tie murders to the actions, specific actions of an administration. A lot of the media are trying to pretend that Fast and Furious is not a scandal. But let me remind you, Watergate didn't have body bags. It's rare where you have a political scandal where you can tie murders to the actions, specific actions of an administration. Operation Fast and Furious was the most ill-conceived law enforcement operation I've heard of in my lifetime. When you think about an administration, a justice department actually creates a program that will sell guns to criminals to set up that program and to talk gun dealers into selling guns to people they don't want to sell guns to. Fast and Furious, really, it's, it's just yet another example of contempt for the rule of law. We're not enforcing the rules. We weren't enforcing our, our gun laws. Can you imagine if Mexico had a program or Canada had a program where they let guns walk into America, what our State Department would have done and have the right to do? And welcome back to the special edition of Hannity, the botched ATF operation known as Fast and Furious. Not only let guns from the United States walk into Mexico, it also cost border agent Brian Terry his life. Joining me now with reaction to two people who have been following the story from the very beginning from the Washington Times, Kerry Pickett and the author of Fast and Furious, Katie Pavlich, is with us. We now know this is deeper than we originally thought. Let's walk through this. So our government literally gave guns to drug dealers, cartels, known criminals, murderers, kidnappers. They gave them the guns, and they didn't track them. Right. No, and, that's, and, that's, Sean, they're giving them to people who are willing to go into a teenage birthday party and mow teenagers, including this women, was in Mexico where down this in Mexico. I mean, no. these are the kinds of people they were arming here. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're, we're also seeing is uh, our, our Justice Department, who just simply does not want to take responsibility. They figure that since the uh, that the IG report came out, and they said, oh, well, gee, you know, Eric Holder, he's not being held responsible. We, we have one retirement. We also have one resignation. And so therefore, 
uh, Eric Holder, he's okay. But you know what? In the end, the, the, the Inspector General Horowitz said, uh-uh, not exactly, because Eric Holder still has, still has to account for a lot of people who are under him at this well, first, point. First of all, I mean, Daryl Issa is doing his job, mm -hmm. and he's been trying to get to the bottom of this from day one, and all they have done is they have stonewalled and stonewalled and stonewalled, and then we get to the point where there's going to be a contempt charge, mm -hmm. then at the last minute in comes executive privilege right. so they can stonewall further. Right. What are they hiding? Well, and this is a case where the Justice Department thinks that giving the American people in the Oversight Committee 7,000 pages of blacked out material means transparency and means the truth. And you had President Obama coming in 15 minutes before the first contempt vote took place in the Oversight Committee on Capitol Hill. And you have Eric Holder and President Obama continually saying this is a low level, rogue operation. Well, if that's the case, then why was executive but it privilege wasn't a rogue necessary? Operation. And exactly. They, and they also said they had great skepticism, the IG report, in terms of what Eric Holder knew or didn't know, because in their words, everybody around him knew they find it a little bit, you know, difficult to believe he had no knowledge of this at right. all. And if you noticed, um, the IG also mentioned that the Justice Department was not forthcoming in giving out materials that the Congress wanted. Gee, what a shock. But when you have your own Inspector General mentioning that to you, saying, look, it's... It, the, the, the Republicans and, and some Democrats as well were being very upset about you not giving out materials, they're not imagining this, then obviously there's something wrong going on in the Justice Department. Right. And it goes all the way up to the White House. I mean, the IG also said that the White House wasn't cooperating with the Inspector General's uh, investigation at all. Kevin O'Reilly, who was on the national security team, was getting emails about Fast and Furious. And when we found that out, guess what happened to him? The Obama administration shipped him off into a State Department position By the way, in Iraq. And we can't find him now. Where is he? He's exactly. missing an action. Not available to answer questions from Congress. Well, uh, I, want to, I want to know this, because they always say, well, this was started under President Bush. The President himself has said that. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. Explain. Well, let's uh, remember here that when the um, that when Operation Wide Receiver, which is what they like to refer to as Bush's uh, gun running program, they were doing, of course, in cooperation with the Mexican government. Kitty actually but explains this. But they also trace the weapons. Right. Big difference. And, 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 right. and they're and making exactly. arrests and indicting straw purchasers rather than just watching them for over a year no. buy these guns and going into Mexico. Exactly. And then when they realized as well that. Some of the Mexican authorities um, also weren't picking up some of these criminals on the other side of the border. They said, you know what, this isn't working. Let's just scrap the whole program. But then, of course, when um, Obama's administration started it up, uh, they just, of course, weren't, weren't tracking them. They figured, gee, these uh, chips aren't going to be uh, working in, in these guns, or these tracers aren't going to work in these guns, so let's just let them go. But, right, and they didn't attempt, let's break down the numbers here. They weren't even attempting to track these guns. Out of 2,500 weapons, there and were there two. There now, right? Two, yeah, there may be more. Two GPS recording devices out of 2,500 were put two out into of the these. 2,500. Two out of 2,500. they could have put them on all of them. Right, and Univision's report uh, earlier this week, they came out and said, look, Bill Newell, who was a former ATF uh, special agent in charge of Phoenix, who was in charge of F Fast and Furious from the local level, he needed guns to be showing up at crime scenes so he could go find them. That was the only way they were finding weapons and tracing them back to the United States so was finding the them criminals, at crime scenes. And now there are a lot of dead people, including a border agent, mm -hmm. uh, including these young kids in Mexico, right. just mowed down, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. blown away with guns provided by the U.S. government, and we have no answers. And no accountability. Absolutely. I mean, now I think Matt Boyle just came out with like a new piece, I think it was uh, showing how a kingpin, uh, or rather drug kingpin Juarez, uh, I think his name was El Diego, he was uh, captured with fast and furious guns. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is absolutely unacceptable. All right, and let's, let's not forget the, the brother of the former Chihuahua Attorney General uh, who was kidnapped and tortured. That's right. And his captors were using fast and furious guns. All right, guys, good to see you. Great work. Thank and you. Unbelievable corruption. And coming up for years on this program, we have exposed President Obama's past association with the group known as ACORN. Up next, there's new evidence of the organization's radical roots. That's straight ahead. ACORN follows the teachings of Saul Alinsky, the father of modern community organizing, and everything that he did was aimed at moving America uh, even farther down the road towards uh, radical socialism.